Am I the a-hole for refusing to spend time with my stepsister? Backstory I'm 15 female and my parents divorced a year ago because my father cheated. He married the affair girlfriend like instantly. I think he's a complete jerk and told the judge I wanted to live with my mom. So I do, but they still said I had to go to my father's every other weekend. I don't want to see him, but it was stressing my mom out with court stuff. I agreed to go, as long as his wife is totally hands-off, and I can stay in my room and not be bothered, except for one family activity of their choice. So, that's where we are. Every other weekend, my dad picks me up, talks at me in the car because I won't talk to him. We go to family therapy where everyone but me talks. I stay in my room until sometime Saturday when I go out with them to do something fun, and then mostly stay in my room until my mom picks me up on Sunday. I have plenty of stuff to keep me busy so I'm fine, but everyone else, not so much. A fair wife has kids, 12 female, 9 male, that would go to their dads on my weekend so I never saw them. But the schedule changed, so now they're there when I am. 9 male is fine, he asks to borrow a video game now and then but is like polite about it and gives them back so sure. 12 female won't leave me the heck alone. Anytime I don't literally have my door locked, she is barging in trying to talk to me or wanting to do something. I try to tell her to leave me alone in a nice way, but last time I just up and told her I never want to talk to her. And I'm going to ignore her from now on. She cried about it. A fair wife got mad, and my father said she's having a hard time with a divorce too, and I shouldn't take it out on her. I told him he could stop forcing me to visit then, and problem solved. Everyone is mad. My mom says she gets it, but 12 female probably is just looking for someone not her parents to talk to. I just don't see why it has to be me. Now for the top comments. I feel like the YTA votes are missing the point. Opie doesn't want a relationship at all with his step-sibs, and I believe that's a fair boundary. Her whole life has been appended, and she mentions that she tried to be polite with a 12 female to leave her alone, but 12 female, most likely with the blessing of stepmom, continued to ignore her request. Also, there was no real timeline given by Opie, which makes me think this has all happened so fast that Opie hasn't been able to process it without adult interference. Opie stated that she would have preferred to stay with mom full time, but is being forced to spend time with dad. The court system in OP state really don't care about her mental health. And she let her bio dad and stepmom know what her boundaries were, and she kept to them. And now because 12 female is around more often, she is being tasked against her free will to cater to the feelings of another child while ignoring her own? Man, that's a lot for OP. OP is not the a-hole, but girl, I do suggest individual therapy for yourself. It might help you down the road when the courts revisit the custody agreement and they might rule in your favor this time. They already try to make me do one-on-one -on -one therapy and it just made me madder because the counselor person wouldn't accept that having a relationship with my father was not going to happen. The whole goal was getting me to talk to him. Not going to happen. Now that does freaking blow and for that I'm so sorry. I do want to say this once more and I'll drop it. If this was one suggested by your male parental figure, then I would suggest one suggested by a neutral third party. Because any reasonable counselor wouldn't condemn you for deciding not to have a relationship with your father. They would give you the space to speak your feelings and expand on them, not silence them. If it was indeed one suggested by your male parental figure, that could maybe a strike against him when it comes to custody agreement. Because one would argue that a counselor was a biased party and a custody agreement should be revisited by someone of unbiased attitude. Stay strong, Opie. Unfortunately, it's often the courts that mandate this type of counseling. The therapist is there to support reunification of the child and estranged parents. I see the benefit of this in cases in which one parent turns the child against the other. However, when a parent has brought it on themselves, like leaving the family for a mistress, they should be forced to deal with the consequences, as in your child wants some distance. Not the a-hole. Your life has been uprooted without your consent. Of course you're angry and having a hard time adjusting. Just try to remember that a fair wife's kids didn't have a say in what happened either, just as you didn't have a say in this situation. 
try to remember that they're probably also having a difficult time adjusting and can be your allies in tough times. I wonder if you'd be willing to try to carve out some hangout time with a 12-year-old so that she has a designated time to talk your ear off. You can be like, okay, but I need some quiet me time after this. So I'll do X with you if you agree to honor my alone time. Good luck, girl. I don't want to spend time with either of the kids. I'm okay with lending a game or two to 9 male because then he goes and does his own thing. 12 female is just annoying. It's bad enough that I have to be around her for family fun time. Anything beyond that, and I'm going back to refusing to visit. And a court people will just have to deal with it. Next story. Am I the a-hole for correcting my stepdaughter's dad when he called me her nanny? I've been with my wife for eight years now, and she has primary custody of her daughter, Santana, nine. Santana sees her dad Mark every other weekend and some holidays. As I have been one of Santana's primary caretakers for the past seven years, since I moved in with her mom, I've taken care of her more than Mark has, and we are quite close. My wife and I went on to have two children together, who are now five years and 18 months. I've been a stay-at-home dad since the five-year-old was born, and as a result, I'm the one making lunches, driving kids to activities, etc. That includes Santana. Mark has always felt insecure about my place in Santana's life. I've always encouraged her relationship with her dad, while also been a place she can go to in order to vent about both her parents. I've never asked her to call me dad, but I've made it clear I love her the same as her siblings, and she's also said she loves me and considers me her second dad. Mark mocks me for my stay-at-home dad role. My wife always shuts him down, and I just ignore him. He has in the past jokingly called me Santana's nanny, and I just roll my eyes and say, whatever you think, Mark. I really don't see him much, as my wife will take Santana to her dad's and pick her up. However, yesterday, my wife was sick and asked me to pick up Santana. She really couldn't get out of bed, and I knew Mark wasn't going to drive out to us as he's refused in the past. So, I went over to his place to pick her up. He was throwing a barbecue and had some family there. I had never met any of them. Santana ran into my arms, excited to see me and shouting my name. A few people looked at Mark curiously, and he laughed and said, That's Santana's nanny. I shook my head and said, I'm her stepfather, Greg. Nice to meet you all. Mark turned red and barely said goodbye to Santana. I didn't think much of it, outside Mark just being Mark. However, Mark texted my wife later saying I humiliated him, and given I'd likely never see those people again, I shouldn't have said anything. My wife told him he's overreacting, and he then texted me saying I had no right to correct him in his own home. He asked what was the big deal in his family, thinking I'm her nanny. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole, but man, Mark must be feeling really insecure about himself, that's for sure. You're doing great, Greg. Santana is lucky to have you. Can you imagine having so little self-esteem that you choose to insult someone who loves your child? Especially when the alternative is, checks notes, also loving your child. What? No, not the a-hole. And you certainly didn't humiliate anyone. He asked what was the big deal in his family thinking I'm her nanny. Did you respond because it's not the truth? I get the feeling that there is a narrative that Bayou Dad has been telling his family about his ex. And Opie just destroyed it by introducing himself properly. I think it's three things. One, it makes my wife look bad that she couldn't be bothered to get out of bed to go get her daughter. Two, makes him look good as he'd never hire a nanny. Three, puts me in my place, so to speak. You forgot about four, tells families paying child support to fund your salary. That would require him paying it, but I'm sure he lies to them and says he does. Next story. Am I the a-hole for making my daughter leave because my husband is attracted to her? I-55 female have been married to my husband and my daughter's stepdad, 63 male, for four years. My 23-year-old daughter and I have a complicated relationship. She has been diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder. She has a lot of trauma from watching me and my husband's horrible marriage go down and was bullied in school. 
When she told me she was being bullied by peers, my view that all children are innocent really tied my hands, because I told her that if I said anything to them, I would be an adult harassing a child. She has blamed me for that ever since, and keeps referring to this one time where the kids at school called her trash due to the fact that she wasn't taking care of her hygiene due to depression. Part, not all, of my response was telling her to take a shower, and I bought her new clothes. The bullying finally ended with an expulsion and a suspension for the ringleaders. She still throws the fact that a school clinic volunteer told her that if she was their kid, she'd have permission to punch back if administrators didn't do anything. I thought that having her live with me while she finishes school and gets a job would help heal some childhood wounds if my second husband and I modeled a healthy relationship. However, my daughter now doesn't get along with my husband. She is a very introverted, creative person who likes immersing herself in escapism. So, she'd get annoyed if she was sitting eating alone, and my husband would sit across from her and eat, saying she ate later so she could eat alone. However, my husband started acting distant for me, and my daughter complained that his eyes lingered for too long. She got very angry, and there was a lot of shouting and slamming of doors. Finally, my husband admitted he's attracted to her, and it's hard to be around her all day. Said she was walking temptation, and said that's why he was avoiding being intimate with me. I was so upset to hear this. I don't blame my daughter for this, but at the same time, the situation has become unbearable. Something would have to give, and I couldn't collect my thoughts with both of them still being in the house. So, I gave my daughter money to stay at an extended stay hotel and asked her to utilize her college's emergency financial and housing resources they have for students in need. She responded by storming out and telling my ex who is now circling social media, using it to paint me as the villain of all villains. I'm not abandoning my daughter. She qualifies for those resources anyway since my ex is unemployed and we are in substantial debt. I just need time to process the situation and don't want to leave my house to stay with my daughter when I have a marriage to figure out whether or not to save. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. You're the a-hole. I am very sorry that your daughter does not have a competent, caring mother. I cannot agree more. OP is disgusting. As a mother of a teenage daughter, this is one of the most horrific things I've ever read. OP, you are a horrible mother. Save your marriage? This man has admitted to wanting to sleep with your child. This man who is a fatherly role wants to sleep with your baby girl. I don't care if she is 23 or 43. She is your baby, and you chose him over her. Shame on you. I desperately hope this is fake. Please, please, please tell me this is made up. You let your daughter down in childhood by not protecting her, caring for her, nor being attentive. Now you are married to a pervert who is lusting after your much, much younger daughter, causing your home to become unsafe for your daughter. And what do you do? Throw her out and keep the pervert. Great going there, mom. You're now two for two. You could have yanked your daughter from school. You could have stormed the principal's office. You could have noticed and immediately gotten her mental health help. But nope, not you. You could have told your husband, Ew, yuck, you are sick. And kicked him to the curb. And gathered your wounded bird to your bosom and vowed to protect her. But nope, not you. You're the a-hole for destroying your daughter's life with your piss-poor parenting and self-involved behavior. But she needs to save her marriage so she can show her daughter a healthy adult relationship. Last story. Am I the a-hole for excluding my sister-in-law and her family on a family vacation because her kid is awful? I-34 female have kids, 6 male, 3 female, and 3 male with my husband Luke, 32 male. Luke's family go on a big trip in the summer holidays with the kids in a big Airbnb. Usually it is our family, Luke's three brothers and their families, and naughty sister Anna, 29 female. Anna never wanted to come before, as she was single, and she said there was too many kids for her to be around, 11 kids from the four families. And she wouldn't enjoy the activities set for the kids slash couples. Anna has been dating Dave, 33 male, for the past year, and Dave has a son, Sam, 12 male. I have met Dave at family functions with Anna. 
At our last family dinner at my house, Sam threw a tantrum over not liking the food and tried pulling the tablecloth off the table, spilling food and pushing plates on the floor and broke some of my tableware. Sam also kicked my older son and tried teaching some of the younger kids wear words. Anna and Dave apologized and were very embarrassed by Sam's behavior and helped clean up. However, neither of them tried disciplining Sam, who ran away with his phone given to him by his mom and watched videos while everyone else was cleaning up. I have met Sam eight times and all of them have been negative experiences. Anna told me that Dave is scared of his ex-wife, so he won't override her parenting, and she doesn't believe in saying no to Sam. Every time Anna tries saying something to Sam, he just reminds her that she's not his real mom. This year, as a family, we had invited Anna and Dave to come along to the trip. However, after meeting Sam, we collectively decided to uninvite them if they brought Sam. This year, we are going to a large beach house for two weeks, and being there with Sam sounds like a nightmare, as neither Anna or Dave will stop him. Anna called me up and was upset, as she said Sam needed patience and time to adjust as he has been through a lot. Sam's mom is getting remarried and his dad has moved on, and excluding Sam from this trip was mean, and Anna asked me to tell Sam to his face next time we meet that he will not be coming on the trip. I tried explaining to her this was a group decision, and for the sake of everyone's well-being and experience on a trip, we had all said no to him. I offered to spend more time with Sam, Dave, and Anna separately outside a trip as a family, but she declined and will not speak to me. The rest of the family agree with me, but the trip is next week now, and I am not sure we are actually the right. Dave and Anna need to get a different Airbnb nearby, bring Sam over in small doses and remove him instantly when he starts to misbehave. They also need to agree, in writing, that they will pay for any damages that Sam does to your rental when he is visiting. This is the only way that Sam can transition into being welcome with everyone else after he has transitioned to your family's rules. When he learns to behave, because otherwise he can't stay, and decides it's more fun to play with his cousins than creating chaos, then he can share your Airbnb. It will be a lot of work for Dave, but he created his problem. No vacation for him until he solves it. I had not thought of this compromise. They stay at a separate place. It's a good idea. Though, I suppose they could say it will make it more expensive for them. They'll be paying for their own place instead of splitting the cost of the main house. Still, it would keep them included. Perhaps also, if they agreed to that, a family meeting with the adults and Sam and them explaining the rules to Sam before the trip. This is a nice compromise. It puts the onus on Dave and Anna to monitor Sam's behavior. I would just make sure that the rules are clear and add to written agreement that misbehavior Violent, rude, and destructive actions means they leave immediately and go back to the rental, whether things are broken or not. Kind of a timeout for Sam and Dave slash Anna, because if they're not going to discipline Sam, then they also need to be in a timeout. Not the a-hole. Dave set the rule that no one can tell Sam what to do. The only thing left is not allow Sam to come. If Dave and Anna can't get their head around that, then why do they want to come and ruin everyone's trip? That is super rude on their part. They are the only a-holes.